Brand new banger. 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 It's Knucklehead Comics Tuesday. It's fucking Tuesday. We got Lay in the building. We got Cap in the building. Cabs can't make it tonight, but he's here in spirit on Lay. My man, just chilling, brother. Chilling. What's up, Cap? How you doing? Doing pretty good. Is that and the father goes shamefully? That's my son. And the other guy goes shamefully. Orion goes, that's my father. Choose fear and hate to run your life. Something you can't do. That was wrong me from the beginning. I was doing it that way. I was going to go down that path. I worry. You thought it was Grayson? Grayson. Sorry. Got hurt. <laughs> yeah. like, not him. <laughs> not him. Make his brain for somebody, anybody that can help. And remembers, ah, freeze. The media. Ah, oh, him a the Randall Savage, his knowledge and all other shit, and his capacity to learn. Absolutely. This, this is yo. The only vegan I'll ever eat is is grilled chicken wings, because that's like vegan to me. You know what I'm saying? Because the chicken wings are supposed to be fried, but you grill the chicken wings, you put it in some sauce, and grilled get some blue wings cheese. Is vegan. That's that's vegan. Like regular moo cow fuck milk. Put it in some honey nut Cheerios. Vegan, because honey nut Cheerios good for your heart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can I steal the question from Cavs. I huh? got it right. <laughs> I would also Shazam. like to steal. I would also like Damn, to steal. I'm... I would also like to steal. You're too late. Wow. I stay loose. I stay high. I stay loose. I stay high. I stay loose. I stay high. I could do this all night. Cause I do what I like. Yeah, I do what I like. Yeah, I do what I like. Sipping goose. Sip is right. And I go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow. Cause I know. I'm the show in the zone, here I go. In the zone, here I go. In the zone, here I go. Yeah, they know I'm a pro. You get elbowed in your elbow with an elbow. Got the arm ball, get the phone ball, get around with the bomb with the bomb ball. <laughs> that is gonna take you to Jersey Shore. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing today? It's fucking Tuesday night. Today is the motherfucking day. Look at the energy in these guys. What's going on? Homie? <laughs> what up, cat? I mean, you you could see the energy radiating from me. Word. As once again, my camera doesn't want to work for this website only. They they getting tight. They getting tight. I, I mean, I understand them. Remember when? Remember when I was having my issue with this website on my on my uh, on my phone? It was kicking me out every fucking five ten minutes. Is is racism? That, that that's what it is. It boils down to is racism. Yeah, we gotta call this thing. Word, shit. Word. shit. But yo, today is the first time in nine weeks or ten weeks that we have not. Uh, we are not gonna be talking about the X Men. Today, we're gonna be talking about Cabs' favorite topic: oh, Star man. Wars. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. <laughs> and Hoach is here, the resident expert. He is a, a jujitsu master in the force. He wants, he wants to catch a bullet with his teeth. Well, I'm a third degree black belt. Word. Yeah. He, <laughs> he killed twice as many younglings as Anakin did. Word. And, Fuck got, and forgot forgiven for it. I mean, they went my way. Shit, see, that's the problem. These these young kids got no respect. They got no respect, motherfuckers. That's too many fucking uh, crystals, man. The spice. There you go. Too much spice. Word. 
They need to get off that tattoo weed. <laughs> <laughs> so Shit, I'm, man. I'm gonna turn my camera off so I can show you the lightsaber I told you I bought from GameStop. Nice. Ooh, okay. Which one that you said that was uh Obi Wan. This is Obi Wan. Yeah. Shows you right there. Okay. Glare, whatever, I'm sorry. Shit. I can tell it's all it's still in the package. So you haven't taken it out and I I, I took it out once to inspect it and put that shit right back in. <laughs> Shit! If it wasn't for my dog crying every time, the <laughs> and don't sleep. I got two action figures from my from my brother. Ooh, I would say this is back in the nineties. Uh, Snow Trooper and my boy Boba Fett still in the original package. Shit! <laughs> so, hey, listen. I remember let the other day say you know geek is in or whatever. Yeah, I'm a geek, but I'll still fuck you up. Best believe that. Word. <laughs> these were these were back in the day when geeks had to be tough. I, I, I remember back in the nineties, like I was telling people, say so I was confused. They're like, "Why?" Because so, I love comic books. I love um, you know Dungeons and Dragons. You know, and there was even some uh, reading books that. You started off as one player, uh, as one thing, and then you got to a certain point, and then they tell you if you wanted to continue as this type of person, you got to skip to this page or whatever. Choose your own adventure. Yes, something like that, yeah. But at the same time, I was playing basketball, baseball, football. So everybody's like, yo, so what are you? Are you a geek or you are a, a, you know, a sports player? And I'm like, I'm the first. I do both. Word. Cause I remember my circle was I had friends that were just geeks and they had no athletic uh, athletic ability whatsoever. Then I had my boys that I, the ones I balled with, who had no aspirations of, you know. I'm like, dude, you never even wonder what's out there. I'm like, to me, that's what Star Wars was. I was like, yo, my man, imagine if the, if we can actually travel between planets the way they do. Shit. They call me Toe Solo. <laughs> you sure? Not Toe Juvaka? <laughs> this motherfucker take off his shirt. He's Chewbacca. Word. <laughs> Word. Shit. I'll be a bold Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, was it? I know that in. I don't know if it's in Florida, but I know the. Disney World in California, they actually have a shop where you can build your own lightsaber. Same in Florida. They have it in Florida now. All right. Yeah, dude, I I wanted I wanted so bad to go there for the experience of putting together your lightsaber, hearing Yoda talk to you, getting an actual actual kyber crystal and putting it in, and all that other shit. And then I saw that the the actual lightsaber you get to leave with. Is a little bulky. It's not constructed well. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Fuck it. There's That's a what... website, Saber Pro. Yeah. All that shit's in the I literally a built my own fucking lightsaber. Which, if I had my camera working, I'd show you guys. But my oh. lightsaber, battle ready. With the hardened fucking blade. And it's... Nobody else in the world has that shit. Because nobody bought, I guarantee you, nobody bought the same pieces and put them together like I did. That's that's fire. I know there's a couple of different uh, websites that put it uh, that they, they do lightsabers and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. But I, 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 but I heard that the real, the real fucking high fire shit is the one in uh, in Tokyo. Like in that one, you you whatever you build, you get to leave with. Yeah, I mean in Tokyo, they probably actually build you an actual lightsaber. Sure. They're getting paid five cents an hour to fucking make them. Might as well have an experience where we get to make it. Wrong, wrong continent or wrong mm. country. And that's yeah, all. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. made in Taiwan. 
<laughs> Shit. Maybe, maybe the pot top, but but yeah, not nah, like uh was it I also in the group in our group knuckleheads, I also I think I sent a uh uh an IG post where there's a couple of Airbnbs in California that are all like Star Wars uh Star Wars themed. Hey, yo, oh. I do not remember that. So speaking of, of themes, there's a you said you said the Dungeons and Dragons there. I don't know if you play anymore, but there is a spot where you can actually go and play in a castle. Like you, you take a vacation and you play a few days in a castle with oh, professional shit. DMs and shit. Like that's a far off dream, but there's something that me and my boy found that we're looking into going like maybe in a and within the next month or two. It's called Twenty Sided Tavern. It's a live play D and D show in in Manhattan. It's in broad. It's on Broadway. It's interactive. You get to you get to help make decisions with the cast. You get to do shit on like they give you an app on your phone. You get to help with roles and shit. Wow. So the way you pick tickets is fucking great because there's three ways to pick tickets. You can just go ahead and go. Fuck it. I want these seats or. You could do an entire story, and based on your choices in the story, that's the seat you'll get. Or oh, wow. you could do a random twenty-sided uh, dice roll, and you might you might pay forty-five dollars for a ticket. If you roll a natural twenty, you get upgraded to a hundred thirty-dollar tickets for that forty-five dollars. Or the other way around, where you get downgraded if you roll a one. Oh wow! Yeah, I have I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons in many 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 years. <laughs> but that's the that's the, that's the hot like um yeah man that sounds fucking cool to me I mean I, I love all that shit like uh when they have medieval times I've always wanted to go there yo med- medieval times is fucking dope yo. I, I that when I was when it, when it was dope dope when it was like in in I didn't have a friend that had cars so I was like I can't go uh, nowhere luckily luckily we had an uncle who took <laughs> Me, Ben, and our cousin over there. Word. We were the red, what the red and yellow night, I believe. I think so. Yeah. Hey, man. It's funny. They give us chickens. Like you got a fork and knife. Nah, you got to eat it like that. What do you want to drink? Coke. All right, we got that. No, they, can't <laughs> just, they can't just give us meat. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. No, but I'm down to go. It's been a while since I did the that shit. But yo, Hulch, we played Dungeons and Dragons on this show. Word. Yeah, know that. shit. Me and Cabs played uh, a one shot by ourselves, and then, and then and yeah, and then me and Ray. I know um, you Lay wanted to, to play show also. Yeah, me, yeah, we went to shows house to do the one shot. So you let us know, and we'll set it up. Yeah, all right, cool yeah. man. Yeah, that, that's 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 some cool stuff. Yeah, yo, and now now with the what do you call it, with the convenience. Of D and D Beyond, you can make your character on that app have everything you need on that app, even even your dice and shit. That's that, that's cool. I, I remember uh, was it like last year or maybe two years ago? Uh, they were doing like this Star Wars stuff, and I went with two of my nephews. Yeah, I've never seen so much Star Wars fucking um, like figurines and stuff like that. Like it was. And they also have some like some sets that they created, which was cool stuff. I took mad pictures. I if I don't ever if I ever decide to, I might upload them on my IG. <laughs> or I might just send them to you. You can probably use them. Yo, yo, there was mad stuff that I was like, yo. And, but it was uh I found it I think it was on Groupon or something. My, my brother found it. He's like, yo, you want to go do this? I'm like, hell yeah. I'm big, always been big on Star Wars. Always. Shit, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta, we gotta do some shit like that. Yo, I just looked up the tickets for uh, Medieval Times. Hundred and forty-five dollars. Nah, it's sixty. It's basically sixty-eight dollars for for an adult. It's in Lindenhurst, New Jersey. For like a, a physical age adult or a mental capacity adult, because we might be able to get show in for free. <laughs> 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 
They don't specify, so we might be able to get showing for forty hours. <laughs> Yo, the only available dates are Friday and Sa Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And in July, they have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, I mean, who the fuck wants to go in the middle of the week? Yeah, that's when nobody's at. Perfect. Yeah, hold on. You know me. I'm probably the least social person you know in your life. <laughs> but an event, I'm even smart enough to know that an event like that requires a lot of people. Because it does nothing when one person's cheering. Come on, you've been to, to dead, deadpan fucking indie shows. When one person's cheering, it kills the whole mood. True, but we get the whole knucklehead crew to go. That's two in each section. Gigi loud enough for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I can feel the slap coming across the fucking internet. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we'll, we'll set some shit up. Oh, uh, you know what's funny, Caps? I, 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 I was just like, eh, I, I hope she's not listening. No, oh. I get away. I get away with what I want on this one. She don't watch the comic boom, dude. I guarantee you, she's in the kitchen right now, or in her house anywhere, just sitting there like, what the fuck did he say? She, she, she knows. But why? <laughs> but why she had to be in the kitchen, Cap? Well, because she has, she's a mom and she has a kid, and I'm hoping she's. Well, this sounds probably way past dinner time, but I'm hoping she's either feeding her kid or giving her a snack or something. I'm gonna go. She's in the kitchen because she's probably grabbing her whiskey. <laughs> and you know, New York apartments, the kitchen is the living room most of the time. Yeah, I hate those type of apartments, bro. Anytime I go, anytime I look at apartments and I see that it's the com the combination shit, I'm like, yep, out, out. No matter how nice the apartment is, I'm like, nope, can't do it. I'm Word. old school. I need my fucking kitchen separate from my living room. It's called an open concept. You can open concept these nuts. <laughs> it's an open concept, but Hoch ain't open to it. Hold he on. ain't open to the concept. Oh, uh, an open concept to your nuts. That's called the vasectomy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and we winning out. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You got me on that one. <laughs> God damn it. Nah, but yeah, I, I, I can't deal with those things. I don't want I don't want my living room to smell like my kitchen. Yeah. Well, well how how long were we in St. Pete's? Two or three years? Um longer I think a little longer than that, but yeah. Yeah, so let's just say let's say five years. Right? Just uh give a number. Yeah. For those five years, my room, <laughs> and I'm doing air quotes for people who can't see me, <laughs> was Three feet from where the fucking refrigerator was? <laughs> About three and a half feet. I just I had a bed pressed up against the wall, a dresser to block where the hallway was. <laughs> and that was it. <clears throat> yeah. Good times. Hey, listen, man. I get it. I mean, I I slept on the living room on the sofa bed for over 10 years because I refused to sleep in the same room as my mother. Once I hit 13, I was like, yeah, I can't sleep in the same room as you, ma. Sorry. Shit. When I was younger, when I first got my, my, my own room, I was sleeping on, cush on uh, the couch cushions. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a bed for a while. <laughs> Shit, these kids don't understand. I, I hear my my nephews would be like, oh, I want my own room. I'm like, my man, you should be happy you got your own bed. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Be happy that you get to go to the bathroom with the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> so we ain't, I ain't that old. <laughs> Shit, there was seventeen of us, Hutch. We had a two room apartment. You, we had a shed. We had a we had a sleeping rotation. <laughs> you, kids, you kids should be glad you got to use the toilet inside. Word, shit. Well, now I do have experience with that because when I was younger, my father, my grandfather still owned farmland, and when I would go to DR, 
you know. My cousins hated me because he'd be like, oh, it's time to go to the farm. And I'd be mad excited. And they'd be like, we hate you. And I'm like, why? Like, we got to do chores. I'm like, but if you do your chores in the morning, after we eat lunchtime, you get to go to the to the river. I'm like, I can't have that shit in the in New York. I said, my river brown. <laughs> with, with bodies, and if, and if I go in there, I might come. I might come out with a third or, or a third arm or a third leg. Word. Actually, the fourth leg. Correct, in the fourth leg. I was about to say a third leg, and not the good kind. <laughs> you you know, and, and they would they would they would get mad at me, and I'm like, yo, you guys don't know how good you guys have it here. And now Word. that I, now that a couple of the a couple of them live here. They're like, yeah, we now we get what you were saying. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, now you get it, right? You dumb son of my bitches. Yo, that Word. grass ain't always green on that other side. Bro, I, I tell people, say, listen, I, I, I'm i okay that I grew up in New York or whatever. The opportunities here, I go, but you said it right, Caps. It's, uh, it's not, the grass is not always greener on the other side, like, I tell people over there, over there, you can live and, and you know, have fun. Over here, you can't have fun if you can't, if you don't work. If you don't have some way of making money, you ain't having fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, I got to pay rent every month. I said, if you guys own the house, you, ain't pay, you don't got to pay rent. Yeah. And I, it sounds better in Spanish, but I used to tell people, I said, over here, you have to work to live. Over there, you can live without having to work. Word. You raise them chickens, you just kill the chickens. Yo, my grandfather used to say, you guys want to eat? To go catch it. That's how we used to do it in the Bronx. Yeah, except we were talking about women. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nighttime pick for uh, Cavs and Lake. <laughs> nah, but yeah, it's it, it's you know it's all it's a different world. But speaking of different worlds, I know this show we wanted to concentrate on the Star Wars. I am absolutely fucking hyped to wait to watch the Acolyte. Yeah. So there's a there's a couple of things that I'm I'm gonna bring up as we get into the discussion here. But when they announced their whole fleet of shows and movies and shit that they were gonna do, the announcement of the acolyte was my number one most anticipated fucking show. So I am equally, if not more, hyped than you are for this show. And I saw Trinity and I said, damn. Now I'm hyped for this show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the only the only other thing that, that would probably get me more hype is them having a show where Vader is hunting down Jedi's. Yeah. And I and I don't mean the Inquisitors. I don't give a shit about the Inquisitor. I'm talking about Vader himself going out hunting other Jedi's looking for Kenobi. For Kenobi's? For Kenobi, oh, <laughs> every, every it, it, even like in all the books or whatever, every time he heard about a a, 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 a Jedi that was alive, he he wanted to go because he thought it would be Kenobi. Yeah, shit, especially with the way that they did that fight scene at the end of Kenobi. Oh, when he was fighting the 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 Are black woman. Yeah, yo, I was always <clears throat> saying to myself like, yo. How do you have the force and you don't use it in the fight? Yo. My man was just ragdolling her. I I got a, what do you call it? That's part of the topics that I want to, or part of one topic that I want to bring up when we get into this discussion here. Yeah, I'm kind of, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie. When I saw Andor, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to know the, the, the backstory of my boy from, you know, Caspian, because, you know, he we know he was a G in the Rogue One. One of the one of what two Latin motherfuckers in the whole galaxy? Yeah. 
Him well, and that, that and too. Him. That too. But you know what? Can't complain because Endor was a badass, and the other Latin dude was literally the ruler of Coruscant. Or no, Alderaan. Sorry. My man, Jimmy Smiths. Yep. But a uh, question for you, because I, I mean, I know, I, uh, I know him as Mando and other shit, but Pasquale is, what is he? Like, I never really dove into what nationality he is. Oh, uh, he's some type of Spanish. I got like, is he Spaniard, Spaniard, or is he like like South American Spanish? I don't know. I don't know, because the, the Game of Thrones thing is throwing me off, because that was more like a Spain-type Spanish. Oh, he's Ukrainian. He's, Chil- he's, Chil- he's Chilean. 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 He's Chilean with he's Chilean with the rest of the Fantastic Four. But he's Chilean and American. That's fucking... All right. That just ruined the whole mood. That we thought we had one. I mean, he's from Chile. He's South American. Yo, Al. He's still Russian. Russian. He's still one of us. Correction. There's three. I forgot fucking Benicio del Toro. I said the key maker. Oh, the 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 the, the thief is what I should have said. But you knew what I was saying. Actually, I didn't because I, I I legit didn't hear you say that. See. No one listens to me, Hodge. But it, yo, that, I got all the answers. That's from a movie that that that's from the only movie to unite the fan base on how <laughs> whack that shit was. <laughs> Bro, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know I, why I, I thought I, I, was, I hated my lips because they were black. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Bro. What what is the last Jedi and the Rise of Skywalker? I was lit. I was like, yo. You know that whole scene in The Last Jedi where she goes to the cave and she sees herself? Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, what is she? And I'm like, yo, she's a Palpatine. And they're like, well, how do you? I said, because what is, I'm like, you guys, they're like, how do you know? And I'm like, I just have a feeling they're going to make her a Palpatine. I said, because she's, it, it's almost like she's a clone. And the one person that w- was obsessed with clones because he was obsessed with eternal life What's property? Dude, you want to know something funny? I, uh, this whole thing came out while I was still working as a security guard for the nursing home. And the fucking, the FedEx guy would come in and we were talking about uh, the, the first one, Force Awakens. Which wasn't he, bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. He was like, he was convinced from then that she was she was related to Palpatine. Because of of she did one move with the lightsaber that he did. Oh, the stabbing. The yeah. stabbing motion, yeah. So he yeah. was convinced. So we were talking about it and all this shit, super hype. Fast forward to the fucking to return uh the Rise Rise Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. This dude is now flipped the other way, and he hated both of the next two movies, and he hated the fact that she was a palpatine. And he hated all this other shit. I was like, motherfucker, that's what you you predicted it. You were hyped for that. The fuck happened? Like he just flipped 180, which is weird as shit. Well, I, I was telling Toad the other day that I was really upset when Disney bought Star Wars and they said that all the books are non-canon. And I'm like, yeah, my man, you just killed so much materials that you could have used. So I'm not I I used to think like that until I heard the actual... So I even have another quote from Lucas, but I heard the, the actual quote from Dave Filoni who was talking, who was telling the crowd what George Lucas actually considers canon. And from the horse's mouth, only the the original movies and the, the TV, the cartoon shows that they did before Disney bought them out. Those are the only things he considers canon. George Lucas considers all the other shit just fun, fun ideas to toy around with, but they're not act. They don't actually belong to the Star Wars universe in his head. Which I have another quote that's gonna make purists very happy that uh, 
we can get into I don't know if you want to do that now, Toe, or I think you want to go. I think you want to go eat something. But I, I said we can wait for that one. So the original movie. Nah, I, just, I just killed the fucking fly in my room, so I went to go get some kind of net to put in front of my AC because it's bullshit. All right, so I hate the, bugs, original, the original trilogy. Yeah. So the so the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy. The first, the first animated Clone Wars cartoon, the right. one that was, that's kind of like Samurai Jack style. Yes, yes, I was about to say that style too. Yeah. yeah, and then the the actual Clone Wars cartoon. Those are the only things that George Lucas considers actual canon. Anything else is just fun ideas that they uh, that they try to play. Right, with. but you see, it, it, the one thing with that was is that. Once they did the Clone Wars, right? Disney already come out and said there was a lot of stuff that wasn't canon. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of that stuff was like the old Republic stuff. And yeah. then, and then you saw them, because I was telling uh, Toe and Leia that the when the episodes where Yoda's in the in the the Sith Temple, <coughs> and they see the Sith Lord with a but like with a mask on or whatever, I go, "That's Darth Bane." I'm like. Come on, how are you gonna say that, that everything else is not canon, but you're gonna bring him back around? You're gonna bring him back around Dark Revan. It was like like I think they no. spoke they spoke a little bit too soon. Well, so I got what do you call it? the quote that I have puts everything in in perspective. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that while Toe's doing what he's doing. <laughs> so uh, George Lucas did his first like actual fucking press appearance at uh, I forgot exactly where the fuck he was. He was doing some shit where he was talking to a whole crowd at a live event, and they they asked him they asked him first off about the. What do you call it? Star Wars and its lack of diversity. And he immediately was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Everybody's an alien. <laughs> yeah. Everybody comes like, from different planets. So yeah. He's like, everybody's from different planets. They, he was like, I made the leader of the resistance the female. He's like, Lando Calrissian was one of the best characters we had. In the prequel, Samuel L. Jackson is one of the highest fucking... Uh, Jedi's master yeah, Jedi yeah. have. Yeah. And he said the only thing that was ever fucking um discriminated against were droids. So he shot that shit down quick. Which which are non-binary. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're robots. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I would say I would actually say that robots are binary. All electronics is binary, ones and zeros. I mean, in this day and age, somebody's going to tell you, no, they're all non-binary. All right, you show me anything other than a one and a zero that makes a <laughs> computer work. Hey. And, and hey, anyway. listen, man, you got you got people nowadays that want to argue that two plus two is four. Yo, <laughs> I, remember, I remember watching some idiot fucking talk to somebody, and he said, who decided two plus two is four? <laughs> and... Uh, when I first heard, I was like, "What the fuck you mean decided? Like that's what it is. If you have two things, and I give you two more things, you have four things. Like that wasn't a decision. That anyway. So this is the this is the quote, the quote that all the purest Star Wars fans are latching onto now to plant their flag in the ground, saying that Disney fucked up everything. And this is George Lucas himself. And he says, and I quote, I was the one who really knew what Star Wars was, who actually knew this world because there's a lot to it. Nobody understood the force. Uh, when they started the other ones, after I sold the company, a lot of the ideas were that were in the original sort of got lost. Uh, let's see. It's but that's the way it is. Yo, He said, but that's the way it is. When you give up, when you give it up, you give it up. The new films, a lot of 
a lot of talent. All right, the new films have a lot of talent and great ideas and production. I feel like they come from my children, and sometimes it hurts a little when they grow up and get away from you. So there it is, straight from his mouth. <laughs> Nothing that has happened since he sold the company is him. Right. They all took the shit and ran. So if you're a purist, the only thing that counts in Star Wars is whatever George Lucas fucking did. And nothing else counts. Which includes the books and all the extended universe shit. Because even even if he okayed them to do it, that's still not his fucking work. Right. So the only thing canon... And according to him himself, the only thing that's correct is, is whatever his name is attached to. Yeah. So I I've I brought this up because I've heard what do you call it? the the acolyte is mirrored in such fucking fan fandom controversy because of stupid reasons and other fucking things, but they the the show writer said that she wanted to do something new with the force and something cool with the force and new ideas and shit like that, which I personally am for. I was like, let's fucking let's get something new with this shit because George hadn't did he had his chance to do cool shit with the force. He didn't do anything cooler than what we got, right? So let's let's push it. But when the whole fandom, not the whole fandom, but a majority of the fandom, when they heard that, they screamed the blasphemy because how dare you go up against what George wanted to do? And now here we go straight from George's mouth. Whatever we see is is it's hurtful to him. So then what? In, in my rebuttal would be would be would, would be then why sell it? Because he he sold it because he wanted to spend more time. He wanted to spend more time with his kids. And that's fine. After listen, bro, after the original trilogy and even and even after the prequels, I was happy. You know what I'm saying? Like I was happy with all that stuff. I was happy reading the books. Like I was telling the guys, one of my I have all three of the dark. I have the Darth Bane trilogy that I I reread all the time because it's literally one of the best trilogies that they they ever created. You know, I also told the, the some of the guys I'm like, you know, like I get what Disney was trying to do, but it's like, dude, you you have so much content. That you don't really need to butcher something like let's cut the fucking the the sequels that they created butchered Star Wars. They they, they uh, fucking the Force Unleashed was okay, wasn't great, and you're like, okay, where are they going? Are they going with you know, uh, you know, this girl being the 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 last remaining Jedi? Or is the the, the kid the, the the ex stormtrooper? Which I don't know why they didn't explore him, because you can tell that he's force sensitive. Yo. Like, Yo, you have so many venues, and then you come out with the last Jedi, and you make Luke Star Luke Skywalker look like a bitch. Yeah, he looked he looks so fucking bad. Yo, you you know what happened? This is what happened. This is this is what happened with the last Jedi. The Ryan, director. Well, so I forget what the fuck his Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Ryan Johnson went into a meeting with Kathleen Kennedy and said, Hey, here's my idea for a Star Wars movie. And he pitched the idea and he said, Yo, I want to subvert some tropes. I want to do this shit. I want to blah blah blah. And she said, that sounds great. And she was supposed to give him his own movie. Separate from the fucking trilogy. 
But for some reason, this stupid fucking idiot said, hey, Ryan Johnson, take your movie, and now you are the second director for this trilogy we're making. And just let him do what he was going to do inside this fucking trilogy, which, as we could see, didn't fucking work because you can't have your second movie subvert everything from your first movie. You're trying to tell a fucking story. Correct. So I don't, I don't blame Ryan Johnson for his movie. I'm not mad that he got, I'm not mad at the last Jedi because he wrote it because he directed it because it, the story played out the way it did. I'm mad at the last Jedi. I'm mad at Kathleen Kennedy. A lot of people mad at her. For allowing The Last Jedi to be part of this fucking trilogy. How did you not? I've, I've said it. I've said it for a long time now. How the fuck do you think a trilogy was going to work by telling three separate people to make three separate movies? That's not a trilogy. <laughs> That's only a trilogy. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna make a fistful of dollars, a few dollars more, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Bro, and for I, anybody who knows who knows uh, film is, history, those are three separate movies made by the same director, but Clint Eastwood plays the same character in all three of them. Yep. So therefore, they're an unofficial trilogy. That's what the fuck. I don't, if that's what she was trying to do, then she should have just kept Colin Trevorrow to do his third movie. Because why the fuck did you bring what's his name back? Uh, the guy who directed the first one. Why'd you bring him back to try to tie everything up in a nice little fucking bow? Which was, was way too much in, for one movie. Yeah. So the, they made they made three mistakes. The first <clears throat> one mistake is uh, not having somebody sit down and come up with the entire through line for that trilogy. All right, that's mistake number one. Mistake right. number two, letting Ryan Johnson implement his film into your fucking trilogy, which didn't make fucking sense. Just give him his own fucking movie like he wanted. And the third thing that they, the third mistake they made was Bob Iger panicked. He saw what George Lucas wanted to do and panicked because he knew that the prequels were not, were not greatly appreciated when they first came out. No, they weren't, which is surprising. Well, not really. When, dude, The Phantom Menace has bad acting, bad writing, and two good fucking fight scenes. The rest of it is about stupid shit. But anyway, listen, I actually like Phantom Men. I just hated the kid they picked to they picked to play uh, Anakin. I mean, you know, I wanted to punch him in his face. But wa- so, watching it back and getting the uh, like the the story, I kind of appreciated the way he played Anakin. What watching it back, watching it back now, without the ex- without the expectations. It's it's okay. Well, see, I, I, I think that's I think that's what it is. After yeah. so many years of not having a Star Wars movies, and then you hear the the prequel of how Anakin became Darth Vader, <laughs> everybody was like, "Oh my God, it's going to be epic!" But yeah. like people forget, you have to build the story up. I so I will say this: Qui Gon Jinn is my favorite fucking Jedi, and if it wasn't for Liam Neeson. I don't think I would have stuck through the rest of the fucking prequels, even though he's only in that one movie. Right. I don't think I would have continued to watch because he he definitely kept that movie together for me. Well, you see, look, my 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 two least favorite things of the Phantom Menace was the kid who played Anakin Skywalker and Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. My. My problem is, well, Jar Jar is just like obnoxiously fucking dumb. Like, if you would have made him 
a little bit smarter, whatever, just clumsy, you, you would have gotten away with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But to make them so utterly useless, and then the funny thing is after all three movies, you know, they had the fan theory that he was actually a, a Sith Lord, and I'm like, okay, guys. Yo, it's, but I'm I'm glad that uh, oh, what the fuck's his name? I think his last name is Best, the guy who played Jar Jar Binks. Okay, yeah, yeah. He went he went through hell from the fandom for playing that character, which that should not have happened. No, it's not I, his fault. No, it's not his you fault. don't ever hate the actor. You can hate the character, but don't hate the actor because the actor's just doing what he was told to do. But he got his redemption when he's the one who saved Grogu in that badass scene in The Mandalorian. Right. So I'm glad that. But the so back to the mistake. The final mistake that Bob Iger made, he freaked out because he knew or because he he had an assumption that they were that these movies were not going to be perceived well like the prequels. So his big idea for The Force Awakens was to softly remake A New Hope, the movie that did work. Right. And being that we didn't get a Star Wars film in a long time, and being that this was something supposedly new, and when we all watched it, it was kind of familiar, we mistakenly gave them the gave them the fucking false sense of security that they chose right by flocking to see that movie. So it's a little bit of our fault as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean... The Star Wars fandom is so big that you hear new Star Wars movies, people are going, you know. I mean, I went and I saw it, and I was, I, I was there. I was like, I don't know if I like it or if I don't know if I, if I hate it. Like, not for nothing. I, I hate Kylo. I hated Kylo Ren's fucking character. Oh, <laughs> Kylo was a bigger bitch than Anakin was in the prequels. Oh my god, I was just like, yo. I was like, man, come on. And then my man, everybody, everybody was calling him Smoke, but it's, it was Snook, Snook or whatever. I'm like, yo, they, he, he's not calling himself a, a Sith Master. I'm like, I have a problem with that. Well, you know, that you know, there can only be two Siths at the yeah. same time. And right. Uranus wasn't a Sith either. You know what I'm saying? One to have have the power and one to crave the power. Root of two, Darth Bane. Again, yeah. it, all, it all comes back. Yep. You know, but um, I was just like, yo, if if you're going to be what you say you are, call yourself that title. You know what I'm saying? I just, like, that was like, they wanted to do, like you said, they wanted to remake the whole New Hope thing. Like, you know, you, you had this <laughs> character come out of nowhere, and you, you're like, I've seen this before. I've seen this before where this character comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden has so much power. And, yeah, and then that's when, and that's when you start to lose interest. You're like, oh, okay. All right, this is a new hope, but with a female version of, of fucking Luke Skywalker. I, I had so much fucking hope for uh, Finn, for John Boyega's character. Everybody did, and then they just threw him off through the fucking Ryan Johnson just threw him to the crapper and fucking in, in uh, the Last Jedi. Like I was like, yo, and I even said it because I remember telling a couple of my friends, I'm like, I came out of that movie, I'm like, yo, I don't like where the main character is going, but this Finn character, I think they got something there. And then it all went to shits. Yo, you know what's funny? To hear uh, Mark Hamill, <laughs> he's doing an interview, and he was saying that when he got the script for The Force Awakens, he's reading it, and it's like, oh, I'm not in this. <laughs> and his agent was like, oh, just get to the end. And he was like, all right, he's reading the part where Kylo goes to call the lightsaber and it's wiggling in the snow. And he was he's like, oh, I'm sitting at home. I read that. I'm like, oh, here's where I come in, save the day, 
the crowd's gonna cheer. And he read past he's like, No, I'm not a, he said he called his agent up. I was like, Yo, I read the script. I'm not in this movie. And his agent was like, You are in the movie. She's gonna hand you the lightsaber at the end. And he's like, What the what do you mean she's gonna hand me the lightsaber at the end? So it's just funny to hear to hear Mark Hamill sit there and read the script and go, What the fuck is this? Like it would have been funny had it said, Oh, so so Vin, so so Finn is a Jedi too. Oh no, no, he's not? What? Wait, no, what? Wait, what? That- I just yo, I just yeah, those those sequel movies were just they, they were a tough pill to swallow. Yo, you know what's funny? Because I'm not gonna lie. Up, Tyson? I'm one of the I'm one of the people who are not a big fan of the prequel trilogy. I watch them back, I can appreciate I'm still not the hugest fan of them. I can appreciate them for what they, the story they were trying to tell and the completeness of the story. Right? I just wonder 20, 25 years from now, how are we going to view the sequel trilogy when we look back on it? Is it oh, going to be one of those things where, where it turns the corner like the prequels? No, I don't think so. There. The prequels, uh, there was a lot of people. There was a lot of people who were not big fans of it, but you can, but you can see what they were trying to do. They, no, they, this is the, you know, you we gave you a Luke Skywalker story. Now we're giving the Anakin Skywalker story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With the sequels, people are gonna look at me like, yo, what fucking story were you guys trying to teach us? Oh. Or, or, or show us. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. See, I appreciate the the, the prequels because it gets you from point from one point to another. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a reason for them. The sequels, there's no reason for them. Yeah, you got that right. I can't even argue with that. But my my biggest thing is like with some of the fandom. You have some people who like so I always bring up the bad writing and the the bad direction I'm going to say this the bad direction for actors that George Lucas has the whole scene with Anakin where he's like oh I hate sand it's coarse it's rough and it gets everywhere all that whole shit right right you got some fandom some people in the fandom who are sitting there going that 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 scene makes perfect sense and he delivered it the way he's supposed to and he hates sand because he was a slave and he came from a slave planet and i'm sitting there going yeah i know i watched him live on the slave planet i know he's from a slave planet right but if you if you don't watch that if you didn't know that nothing in that fucking performance makes sense said that he was that he hates sand because he used to be a slave that just sounds like a fucking rich kid who's like, I hate sand. It gets in my Gucci slippers. Right. I I, 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 can, I 100% see where you're coming from. But I remember a lot of the fandom hating, hating Christensen. And I'm like, guys, you got to understand. He's playing the character the way it's supposed to be played. The reason Anakin turns to the dark side is because, yes, he is an emotional bitch. Yeah, they, like I said, a, a lot of the actors got it. You know, this is the one thing that everybody would tell you. George Lucas is not good at directing actors. He's no. good at telling a story. Yes. And he's good at directing a movie, but he's not good at directing actors. So a lot of the blame that the actors got should not go to them. They're like you said, they're literally doing what George Lucas wanted them to do. Bro, it got so bad for them that he this is he quit acting because of the backlash he got. Yeah, but this is this is what I don't understand from people though. Because this is why I'm not a part of any fandom. I will never ever even the shit that I that I absolutely love, you will never hear me say that I'm part of that fandom. Because 
I don't I don't understand people who can't fucking acknowledge. You had George Lucas right. give Anakin uh, give Hayden Christensen direction, and when we first saw it, we all rejected it. He got from certain from a certain sect of the people. He got bullied. He got that based. He got all that shit. He got that based. Yeah, but you bring Hayden Christensen back, the same dude. He fucking didn't love. change. He didn't fucking. He didn't all of a sudden go and be. He didn't leave Star Wars and become an an Oscar winning actor nope. and all the shit. No, nope. he was on the farm. Yeah, he, on he farm. came back a different writer, a different director, and somebody who can actually pull out real emotions. And this is the best fucking Anakin Invader we've seen ever. And it's the same guy. So I, I, I all the people you. that, so where I get stuck, it's all the people that are so fucking tied to George Lucas who can't realize or can't acknowledge that other people can have good ideas and can do shit in the same vein, a little different, maybe a little better, doesn't negate his performance. So Hayden Christensen's performance in Ahsoka and in Obi-Wan does not negate what he did in the prequels. No. For, any, for everybody who loves the prequels, it does not negate it. It fucking enhances it. And I don't understand how why people are so fucking against every fucking thing. Because, I mean, George said it. George said it himself. It's his sandbox. He knows everything. He's the arbiter of it. Right. But... Hey, from somebody who's not part of the fandom, like I just said, he sold it, y'all. Again, you don't have to like it. You don't have to like all of it. But when shit is good, when good shit does happen, you can't also shit on that. Right. See, he that, sold the shit. He gave he gave it up. Yeah. People people <laughs> tend to forget that his original cut of Star Wars was horrible. Yeah. Like, he, he, people walked out on the original cut of Star Wars. He brought in an editor, and the editor was like, yo, you need to do this, you need to do that, whatever. And that's what, that version is what people see today. Yo. Now, mind you, he brought back that editor on <laughs> Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And not to mention, universally speaking, Empire Strikes Back is probably the most beloved yeah. Star Wars movie. Period. It is mine. I am not I, uh, that and Rogue One go Rogue One go hand yeah. in hand. Empire Strikes Back was not directed by George Lucas. George Lucas didn't think he could fucking direct it the way it needed to be done, and he gave the reins off to somebody else. That motherfucker put his stamp on it. Boom. Awesome. The biggest fucking movie in the entire series. So what the fuck does that tell you already? And I'm I'm only this I'm only this animated and I know you guys can't see me. And trust me, my hands are going. Anybody who knows me, my hands are going. Yeah. I'm only this animated because I want I'm I do not fucking have a distaste for new ideas. If you want to do something new, let's see the fucking new thing. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and poo poo an idea before it gets off the ground because it doesn't fit into your version of what George Lucas says. Right. Especially since there's a bunch of motherfuckers who who do fan films. Oh yeah, like you, you go, you go on YouTube, film, you go on YouTube, you find uh Darth Maul fan films, everything. Yeah. Everything. If you do fan films, you have no room to you have no room to criticize the idea that somebody wants to take something in a different direction. Again, once once we see the finished product, then right. we can all sit down and critique it. But before the finished product comes, you have no leg to stand on. To fucking sit there and go, oh, it goes against this, it goes against that, it's not coherent with this. When you make fucking fan films, 
that I guarantee you are nowhere near what the fuck George would have done. Right. So, like that. I sent I sent the group. Um, the fight scene between an old Obi Wan and Darth Vader on the, on the, the on the Death Star, the uh, remaster version. And somebody did that, and it's fucking awesome. I, I'm pretty sure if you go to YouTube, you'll find it. So all you got to do is put Obi Wan versus Darth Vader remastered or and, or reinvented or whatever, and that, that, you know what I'm saying. But again. That's done now where we have the technology to do something like that. Now, people forget that when Lucas was doing fucking A New Hope, they were still doing hand puppets. They don't, no people, nobody does hand puppets no more. It's all CGI. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People, he had a, the, the, like the, people forget. They think like some of the scenes they see with the, the big uh, Star Destroyer uh, ships. Are fucking are like those are fucking models. Yeah, are you sure we're not gonna get a strike for this? Disney don't play with their shit. It was it's a re reimagined scene. I don't. This is is this it? Yeah, that's gotta be it because this is this is CG. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, this is it. Let, let's hope we still let's hope we still have a show after this. We ain't got no sound on it, so well, I got sound with. Oh, you know what? Just so we don't get copyright, we got to do the the fucking Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> just completely go the opposite way. Wait, this is the same fight that they had on the scene they just redid, or this is the whole? This is a new fight. This is a brand new fight because yeah. the the original version of the fight, George Lucas wanted them to do actual fucking how you would sword Over- fight. Yeah, and anything. All this fucking, all this shit is not what you would actually do with a sword. Okay. Yeah, he, he Lucas wanted him to do almost do like you would do fencing kind of shit. Yeah, he wanted realistic fencing, which is what you got in the original trilogy. Yeah. And in the prequel, in the prequel, he said, "Oh well, let's see." He was like, "We got a couple of characters who were either at the end of their life or just starting out as Jedi." He's like, "For the prequel trilogy, let's see what a fully fledged Jedi would do." With the force and with the fucking lightsaber skill, and then they went fucking bananas with that shit. Yeah, and the, the, the only one that beat Vader was Obi Wan, right? Yeah, and his son. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what? I would say the only one who actually beat Vader was Luke. Shit, that this, I think this would be a way fucking better fight. That's probably that's part of the reason why when I was younger I didn't like watching these shits because yeah, you got to remember Alan Guinness was like fucking eighty years old. Right? Yeah, <laughs> oh man. Like, he so the reason why uh, Christopher Plummer. No, Christopher Plummer or Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee, the guy who played uh, Tiberius, Tyrannus. The reason he was able to do what he was able to do in the prequels, even though he was also an older gentleman, it's because he, he was a fencer beforehand. He was a, he's a military man, and he did fencing. Kwai Gwan like Jin. Kwai Gwan Jin was in a movie called Rob Roy where he had to be a fencer. Uh, like he, was swords, he was a swordsman. Yeah. So he has Liam Neeson has prior fucking experience, you know, handling a sword. I do. Yeah. I, do you know that? Uh, the, 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 I don't know if a lot of people know. I, they should know this by now, but Ewan McGregor has, uh, I think, a brother in the Air Force, and his call sign 
is Ob two instead of because instead of in in, in, huh. in honor of his brother being Ob one. That's fucking dope. Yeah, that is dope. Yeah, so he's a he's a pilot, and his his call sign is Ob two. So I I was like the, the little the little shit that you pick up here and there. I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. But um, I do have one question for you. Um, do you think that Solo was there was so, so such a big backlash for Solo because of the shit show that was the Last Jedi? Yes. Yeah, I, I think, think I think it it suffered. I think it it came out at the wrong time because it came out in the middle of a, of a fan revolt. Because I I saw Solo, and although I ultimately think it was completely unnecessary, it is not a trash movie. No, it's it's better than the fucking last two sequels we got. Yeah, my only my only issue is I don't think I don't think Alden Ehrenreich was the best choice to play Han Solo. Like I couldn't I couldn't see and I know that this is supposed to be him before he's Han. Right. When he was but, just starting out and stuff like that. Yeah. But like when you could see say what you want about like I just said the the way he was told to act you can at least see how Anakin was so easily manipulated into becoming Vader. Yeah. I don't see how the fuck that Han became our fucking Han. And I, I think... Okay, I, yeah, think if, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. I think if they would have if they would have held off on it or maybe like a... Like a Short fucking four episode Disney Plus thing. But you know, you know what the issue is? Most of Han Solo was fucking Harrison Ford. Yeah. Like okay. when they, when 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 Princess Leia said, I love you, and he goes, I know. That wasn't the original line in the movie. The original no, line was, was, was yeah. It was him saying, I love you back, and he goes, Nah, man, that's not what Han Solo does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the good lines in Star Wars was ad libbed, and George Lucas just kept it in there because he knew his shit wasn't as good, and that, that was one of them. You know what I'm saying? I see. I I appreciate. I can appreciate so uh, no solo the movie, and, and I'm and I'm like you. Was it totally needed? No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but the little tidbits they threw here and there, you know, the appearance of Darth Maul. When he was creating his fucking his uh his uh his spy circle whatever he was like you know like a lot of people who don't read the the comics or read the books will never know that he be he created a, a crime syndicate yeah he was trying to take over i think he was trying to take over where the where job of the hut fucking left open well like nobody understands that I'm like, yo, that he actually did try to do that because, you know, and I think the Star Wars, the the Clone Wars, did it justice where you see him going mad and stuff like that because, well, man, he did get cut in half. It's not something you know. It's not normal. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. When when he came back, yeah. I was one of those. I don't even know if I'm. If I'm on an island to myself or not, I was mad because how the fuck you live getting cut in half, but my boy Obi Wan gets he dies by getting stabbed. He got stabbed once. This motherfucker was bisected. He's fine. He he held himself together with his hatred of the fucking dark side, and what? Qui Gon believed so little in the Force he couldn't fucking held on for two seconds. Like <laughs> everybody else who gets stabs uses loves the Force more than Qui Gon Jinn. Well, they, they did say that Qui Gon was more of a gray Jedi than a regular Jedi, and that, that's the thing I was trying to tell. I was telling Toad the other day is like there's different levels of the Jedi. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people think a dark Jedi is a Sith, no, he's not a Sith. 
No, that, that that would be a great way to describe Mace Windu because Mace Windu can his form actually right. taps into some dark side shit. Correct. And then Kaguan Jin is somebody who is almost like almost like an anti-hero kind of thing. That's your great Jedi. Yeah, so he's for anybody who's playing the home version, as I like to say, <laughs> they consider all right, they consider him a pseudo great Jedi because f- to be a Jedi. You have to avail yourself of all attachments because if you're attached to shit, as we saw with Anakin, you're prone to jealousy, anger, fear, questioning, a whole bunch of shit that can lead you to the dark side. Right. But Qui-Gon believe that through compassion, love, attachment, that can strengthen your bond with the force to make you an even stronger Jedi. Because it gives you something to fight for, and you're not just this vapid fucking priest who robot, basically a robot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what that's what started the whole consideration for Grey Jedi and all that shit. And just think, just think, if he didn't die and he trained Anakin, just think what Anakin would have done had he had learned. Compassion. Had he had learned that his attachment is a strength and not something to be feared and not something to hide. Had he learned that the uh, fucking he could say he could have saved uh Padme without turning to the dark side. Yeah. Or Word. or if he just learned that he didn't need to save Padme. Right. And and it's, I I one hundred percent believe that Qui Gon would have went back and got Shmi, which is his mom, and saved her from her fate. The only thing that would have changed is then we don't get the Skywalker name, or no, we don't get Uncle uh, Owen and Aunt Beru because right. she would have married into that family and blah blah blah. Right, but then again. They, they might not be have been needed because then you don't need to hide kids from AKA Darth Vader, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker, because yeah. he doesn't turn to the dark side. Because, the, the one of the biggest one of the biggest things that was pointed out to me is Anakin needed a father. And when Qui-Gon died, Anakin got a brother who was... Right. All of a sudden, told to take care of this kid. Right. When he had, he was just a Padawan himself not too long ago. He didn't want to take on this responsibility. So he got somebody who was almost reluctant. Yeah, reluctant and unintentionally half assing this thing. Yeah. Because then, he was learning then, as they go, and plus, didn't didn't Obi Wan have his own love interest? Yeah, Obi Obi Wan is a, is a fucking hypocrite because he was doing he had his own shit, telling Anakin not to do his shit. Well, the reason the reason why, and even with the Clone Wars, whatever you see him telling Anakin not to do what he was doing, was because it almost led to him leaving the Jedi Council. Yeah, but again, but again, he was also taught by the Kai Kwan, which was like, "Yo, you sh- you should have attachments." So it is like, eh, you know, like Obi Wan was stuck in the middle. He's like, "Yo, I have my master who's telling me, yo, it's okay to have attachments." Then I have all these other guys telling me that I should have no attachments, and and then I got this queen because let's cut the crap. She was a queen. Yeah, the Queen of Mandalore. Right, who wanted him, and he's like, yo, what the fuck do I do? Yo, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty, right? We see what the fuck happened when Yoda got his way. The entire council and the entire sect of Jedi were wiped out. Right, because he Go got on, blinded. Liam. He got, they got, they got right turned. Here. They got turned into the one thing they should have never been. <laughs> 
they, no, they, I mean, they, they got arrogant. That's what it is. Instead of becoming peacekeepers, they became soldiers. Yeah. And that is not what the fuck you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? The reason Anakin was so such a great general was because let's cut the crap. That boy has some hate in his heart. Yo, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the scene in the Clone Wars where the second in command took Obi-Wan's girl, the Queen of Mandalore, and looked Obi-Wan dead in the face and was like, yo, I know you want to kill me. But you can't kill me because she's here. And then the kid just walked up behind him and said, I don't know. She's not sucking my dick. Bong. And just fucking murked him. And yo, they looked at Anakin like, Anakin, what the fuck did you do? And he was kind of like. I eliminated a fucking problem. Yeah, but the way they portrayed it, it was almost like he just threw up his hands like, you know me. That's what I do. And then the <laughs> laugh track hits. And like, That's quagmire. Like, it was played so nonchalantly that, that Anakin just showed up and murked somebody. And if, you, if you're not privy to the fact that he's going to turn into Vader, that shit's really like, wow. He just killed this dude? No negotiation? No, nothing. Oh, hey, you're surrounded. Put your hands up. You're going to jail? Like, nah, just straight death. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? But I also think that Mace Window was also a big hypocrite because, you know, the way he decapitates Django, but then in the same breath, he's going to tell Anakin, no, I don't trust you because you're too emotional or some bullshit. And I'm like, bro, you tap into the dark side, so you have to be emotional. Yeah. So wh- what are you saying? Yeah, I, I think that I think secretly, and we'll never know because the, the story is written. You see what it is. There's there's nothing to give us extra context. There's no nothing to give us an extension on this. So this is pure speculation on my part. I think I know where you might be going with this, but go ahead. I think secretly, Mace Windu hated Anakin because. He hated the fact that Qui-Gon wasn't so tied to the fucking council and believed in this fucking, the the savior prophecy. And it's almost one of those things where like Qui-Gon's like, yo, you guys are, this is the motherfucker. I found him. Mace Windu's like secretly in the back of his head, like, shut your bitch ass up. This ain't him. I actually think, I actually think, uh, Mace Window thought that he was the chosen one himself, nah. which is why he did really like Anakin. Because he, because to him, think about this, right? His form lets you lets him tap into the dark side, but he's also a Jedi, so that would be a balance. So you know, the prophecy is the chosen one is going to bring balance to the Force. So in his head, he's like, I embody that balance in the force because I can tap into the dark side, but I don't let it over tuck over 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 overtake me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, that- I, I think that's why he was jealous of, of Anakin. Yeah, that could be that's a good point. I didn't see that. That's the that's the beauty, all right. That's the beauty of allowing a piece of work that is made by somebody to be extracted, to be examined, to be uh, disassembled and reassembled and to pull pieces and inspiration and to do new shit. Because then we get ideas like the books, like some of the shit that did work right in the in the Disney era of Star Wars. Because the way I see this is the thing, right? Marvel Comics, a lot of it, a lot of the heroes that we know and love come from Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Correct. And never once did either of them sit there and go, 
well, those are my stories. I'm the only one who knows these characters. No, they did the, they made the characters, they laid the groundwork, and they allowed people to run with it. Has everything people done with their characters since been good? No. But some of the best shit that has been done with those characters came after them. Yeah. And all of it is allowed to fucking coexist in this miasma of we have this that was gifted to us for us to expand and to use and to like and to love and all this shit. So when it comes to Star Wars and everything is so like the the starch fucking fan base is so attached to it's only George, it's only George, it's only George and whoever he gives knowledge out to. It boggles the mind. Right. Because he gave us this thing. So we could fucking our imagination. He gave us the inspiration to let our imagination run wild. He gave us the playground. He they gave us that the, box. Yeah, he gave us the sandbox and gave us all the fucking action figures. Let us go run wild with it. And again, has all of it been good? No. But there has been good shit within it. Just much like X Men '97 has been the the best thing that that uh, that Marvel has done in a long time. Rogue One is probably probably my favorite Star Wars movie. A fucking excellent movie within the Star Wars realm. Yeah. The final so season of Clone Wars. I think that's season seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The best fucking thing they've done. So there is room for shit to to be good. We just gotta let it let let the motherfuckers cook, let it breathe. Uh, yo, I'm hyped for a show that now should it be set in the old republic? Yeah, but the old republic's gone and they replaced it with the high republic. Same yeah. shit, different name, right? Yeah. But I'm hyped to see a dark side user who's hunting down Jedi in an era where Jedi have become complacent because they don't believe that there's any Sith around. They think yeah. everything's fucking hunky dory. That's what happened to Yoda and his and his fucking Jedi's. Yeah. So now we get to see we get to see what happens when you take somebody who has mastered being a Jedi. And push him to the wall and show him a threat that they didn't that they weren't ready for. And let's see what happens. I'm let's see what the 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 showrunner has said that she wanted to do something new with the force and something cool. Let's see what they come up with. Cause like Toe brought up the fight scene between Reva and uh and Vader. Yes. That's one of the best. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That's one of the best fight scenes I've seen on film. What Vader was able to do, just using the force alone, without even having to wield his lightsaber, it's some of the best thing I've seen on film. That's shit I've been waiting for since I first saw the first original Star Wars for me back in 1992. Okay. And based off of the previews where we see it's a little a little matrixy, a little fucking like martial arts film type shit. Well, let's see what we got. Nah, I hear you. But uh like I wanna I wanna touch base on uh Ray Parker and, and you know, what he did in those fight scenes, you know what I'm saying? Because we were all used to the just basically, you know, staying on the floor, heavy swings of, you know, because if people don't, if people don't realize, if you look at Luke's way he was fighting Vader, that's the way Anakin was was that's Anakin's fight style, heavy blows and stuff like that. Yeah. You, get, you get Ray Parker in, and now you got the the acrobatics and stuff like that. And not for nothing, like I said before, you know, Liam Neeson had uh, experience holding a, a sword. And, 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 you know, Ewan McGregor did a very good job of learning how to, you know, 
use a sword. But man, Ray Parker, man, that's a bad dude. Yeah. Yo, they got they got him because they wanted somebody who was a little bit more like an acrobat. Yeah. Who can who can do the, the twists and the turns and stuff like that? The you know, and you know, he he pulled it off. And of course, for those who don't know, Ray Parker also plays Snake Eyes in the Jedi movies. And he's also Toad in the original X Men uh live action film. Correct. X Men two, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, the well, first he, one. he's in X Men one and the first X Men. He's in the first. Uh, yeah, you're right. The first X Men. What happens to a toad when it gets hit with with uh, electricity? Like, Same mm-hmm. thing that happens to everything else. The yeah, greatest right, line yeah, yeah. ever written. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was it was number one. <laughs> yeah, number two was all about uh, Nightcrawler. Yeah, Kurt Kurt Wagner. So, all right, so now getting to the Acolyte, Leon want to know, is this uh, during the Revenge of the Sith? No. But this so, is, this is be, what, 100 years before then? Yeah, this is 100 and something years before the prequels even happened. This is yeah. what's known as the High Republic era, formerly known as the Old Republic era. This is back when... Darth Raven and all of them. Yeah, Darth Bane, Darth Raven. But I think more specifically, this era is set right after that where the jedi believe that they have wiped out the sith yeah this is right after the dark bane era the brotherhood of evil with uh khan and all them he that's the guy that uh darth bane tricks into doing a, like almost like a spirit bomb so and then when uh, when that happens bane leaves the planet and he takes a young girl with him so for many years, the Jedi thought that the Sith were all dead. Meanwhile, Darth Bane is in the in the cut, you know, doing shit behind the scenes and teaching this girl how to, you know, be his apprentice. And the girl is actually special because she was able to do Sith magic. Hmm. I think her her name was uh, Darth Zana. Like I said, bro, I have the books. If whenever you want to read the books, I'll I'll take them to your house. You can read the books, bro. Fucking books are fucking awesome. Okay. So, is this? So the, I'm I'm gonna assume that this is after they made the ruler two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So originally, originally they were just as many fucking Sith as Jedi. Yeah. Like it was just warfare, and then. There was so much fucking infighting and so much fucking like backdoor politics and just stupidity with the dark side and the Sith that they came up with the rule of two. It was like they can only be two of us at one time. Well, Darth Bane created that rule because he saw that it made them weaker to have so many people try to be Sith. Like, um, and it's all explained in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the trilogy book with Darth Bane. You know, he was recruited to join the, um, the Sith army. And the guy that put the Sith army together was a, uh, uh, a Sith by the name of uh, Lord Khan. They, they, at one point, they stopped using the Darth title because they said that be, if you had the Darth title, that people were challenging you. So instead of the dark title, they were called Dark Lords. That they were called the Dark Lords of the Sith, or some some bullshit like that. So uh, the Lord Khan was the one that got them all together, and they had an army, an army just as big as the Jedi army. Which is, think about think about it now, it's crazy, you know. But they have sis, they had Sith assassins, and, and and all that stuff. But you no, know, Darth, uh, Darth Bane was like. No, the 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 Sith were never supposed to be out in the light. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. everybody, for everybody to see, they're supposed to be in the cut, behind the scenes, fucking shit up. So he tricked them to in, uh, implode, like, or like I said, it's almost like a spirit bomb. And there was a lot of Jedi's who followed them into the cave. 
Now, the thing that happens was once he detonated that that bomb, anybody, I think, in like in the five mile races that was force sensitive was sucked in. Like I said, I have three. I have three books on the Dark Bay, and I also have a comic book too. It, it's it's a, that's actually some real cool shit. Like I, I tell people shit out. There's so many books in the Star Wars universe that you can really just you don't. There's nothing for you to get tired of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Instead of hold, instead of honing in on just one piece of it, there's it is expanded so much that there's something for everybody. You you can get whatever you want out of, excuse me, out of being a Star Wars fan. You don't have to be a Sith. You don't have to be a Jedi. You can be a fighter pilot. You can be part of the stormtrooper shit. You can be part of the clone troopers. You can be a spice runner. You can be a fucking mystic. There's so much shit that you can do. So much shit you can be a part of. Something that you could sink your teeth into. And you, can be a sister, you can be a sister of death more if you want to. Yeah. You can be a night sister. Like There's so much shit in this world that you get to play around with and find yourself that is it's it's one of the reasons why it's such a big fucking property and so many people fucking love it so like i was telling toe uh, that in the extended universe before disney made it not before they came out saying that the books don't count or anything you know han solo and leia had three kids anakin solo and jan and I for, it was it Jason and Jan or something like that. I, I forget the twins' names. You know what I'm saying? And and you know also in the extend in the universe, uh, Palpatine has sent a a uh, 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 assist assassin to kill Luke, who ended up being Mara Jade, who ended up being becoming Luke Skywalker's wife, and they had Ben and Ben Skywalker. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many different levels to the Star Wars universe that you can. And, and most of the, the most of the stuff is done in trilogies. Most of the books are done in trilogies. So you pick a a, a, a trilogy you want to read. You pick up all the books, and, and that's a whole new universe that you just open yourself up to. Yo, to to piggyback off of that, for anybody who's just now getting into this shit, and just saw, maybe they just saw the Clone Wars or Rebels or the uh, Sokatana show. And they wanted to, um, uh, what the f- shit? I'm blanking on on the name here. What's the the main bad guy that they were going after? Thrawn. Yeah, Admiral Thrawn. There you go. If you want to get into his shit, the Empire. Empire. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, one of the fucking best best series of books that you can read. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's so many. There's so many different ways you can go with the Star Wars universe. <laughs> It's fucking amazing, you know. So, so I, that's so why. That's why. It. That's why I was a little bit upset when Disney, Disney was like, "Oh no, we're not. We're making those, you know, disregarding all those." I'm like, "Man, you just killed so many storylines. You guys can actually bring to life." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, when you read, you bring it to life, but to actually see it on the screen, you know what I'm saying? Like. And I, I'm sorry, you know, my, my whole thing is that they made Skywalker look, look so much like a bitch in The Last Jedi. Like, he was a cranky old man. Yeah, yeah but they redeemed him in Mandalorian 2.0. Oh, yeah. They kind of redeemed him with that spirit fight he did. What, with Kylo? Yeah, when he was out in the field and it was just his spirit ghost. And then he went into the Force. I mean, that was kind of cool. Hey. Yo, how much cooler would it have been though? For so, do you want to keep some of the same thing? He's not going to train Ray. We call he's not going to like again. Few adjustments. Not going to train Ray because he sees something that he hasn't seen since Kylo, right? And what he sees in Kylo is the fact that Kylo cannot be fucking redeemed. Unlike Vader. Which that entire fucking movie, all he wanted to do was be redeemed. 
that sec what the third one, right? Yeah. Which that's what I'm saying. Little tweaks. If you keep so before I get finished to what I'm saying, when when what's his name? Um who's the guy who played Kylo Ren? Shit. Adam Adam, uh, Adam Driver. Yes, Adam when Driver. Adam Driver signed Adam on to do the movie, he on he thought that the he was pitched with the idea that Kylo Ren was literally the reverse uh, Vader. Where we see Vader in the original trilogy go from the dark side to be redeemed. He was pitched as Kylo Ren going from he might he might be savable to by the end he's no, he's worse than Vader and he's not savable. So just think how much better that fight scene would have been had had uh, what do you call it? We had the thing where Luke did not want to train Ray because he had right. that that same feeling about Kylo. And then he shows up for real. And for real stops the fucking bombardment with the force. Then him and Kylo get into a real fight. And even though he cannot be saved and redeemed, he senses Leia and he can't kill Leia's son. So he does what Obi-Wan does. And gives in to the force. Yep. And mirrors what the fuck his mentor did for him in A New Hope. I mean, and yeah, that, get, that would be awesome. We get the, third fi- the third film where, no, we got to fucking stop Kylo. Because, yo, because cause not for nothing, imagine, imagine, uh, too bad she really passed away in real life. But imagine yeah. if they would have, like, did that and shown that Leia was the stronger twin in the force. And, and, and then she showed her strength in the force. Yo, and even that wasn't well, enough to, and, to and turn the, Kylo. That's the whole thing. In, in some of the books, in the extend, expanded universe, she gets trained to be a Jedi. Yo, can you imagine if, again, if she didn't pass, if in the third one, Kylo shows up and they're like, yo, this dude took out Luke because they don't know, like Leia knows because she felt it, but everybody else doesn't re- doesn't really understand and they're like, yo, he took out Luke. Luke was our last hope. He was the last Jedi. What are we going to do to stop him? He's chasing him down. And Leia, we're talking with the Force Ghost of Luke, the Force Ghost of uh, Yoda. Obi-Wan. <laughs> and, the woman, and the woman that trained her that we didn't know but was a badass fucking yeah. Jedi. But they tell her, you have to stop Kylo. We know he's your son, but you know what to do. And we get to see how badass Leia was going up against Kylo Ren. Shit. Now, do, do we get Kylo Ren to kill Leia instead of for Han Solo? No, I think he still needs he still needs to kill. T- to be honest, he needs to kill all three for him to be that credible, irredeemable, threat and irredeemable, yeah. and for mm-hmm. him to be and the. How fuck how weird is this that we're saying in order for you to be not redeemable, you gotta kill your father, your uncle, and your mom. Where Anakin literally killed kids, and he's fine. We can redeem him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, were they kids or were they midgets? They were, they were, <laughs> well, Reva was a kid who got again no hate, no hate for the actress. This is not hate for the actress. She's probably a lovely woman. But the character. How do you get stabbed twice? <laughs> you got stabbed twice and lived. Justice for fucking Qui-Gon. Yo, but isn't it that the, the Force decides who wins the, the battles? Or is that just some made-up shit that people said? I, I've never heard that because... To tell you the truth, they everybody, if you go back to the things, nobody ever considered Obi-Wan a great Jedi until he beat Vader. Yeah, so so the whole force uh picking winners and losers, that's something that Freddie Prince Jr. said after after doing the uh Rebels cartoon nah. and being under the learning tree, not to take something from Chris Jericho, but being under the learning tree of Dave Filoni and George Lucas, but I don't think, I don't think that's the official 
word. Okay. Right? It's just something that he he gathered. That's that's his official version of it, but maybe not the official version. Okay. But what if Qui Gon isn't dead? Well, we know we know he's a Force Ghost. What if he's not? What if he? What if he's Luke Skywalker in it? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> the the fucking one who believed that Anakin was gonna bring balance to the Force, all of a sudden decided to go fuck it. I'm gonna fake my own death and watch him burn the world. Yep. Nah. Because he needs to bring balance to the Force. It's just not now. Well, listen. Technically. He did bring balance to the force. Technically, uh, no, Anakin brought balance to the force because there was only two cis and there were thousands of fucking Jedi. So at, at the end, there were two cis and like two or three Jedi. So he brought balance to the force, technically. Yeah, the, the problem was that he kept making Star Destroyers and there was no balance for them. That's what uh, Darth, v- Darth Vader's downfall was. The Star Destroyer. You mean the Death Star? Them both. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> actually, Palpatine was the one that wanted the Death Star, not not Vader. But Yo, what I don't understand what the obsession with Death Stars is. Like it didn't work the first time because my man was smart enough to put a defect in it. It didn't work the second time because they got there. As you were building the ship. Right, before they could finish construction. And then you did nothing with it the third time where you could have wiped everybody out. Like, fuck sitting there giving you your first order speech as if you're uh, in Germany in fucking 1941. <laughs> like, start shooting, mother- like, use it. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he put the Death Star ray on all their ships. Bro, I just... <clears throat> It's just like some some of the uh, yo what up normal guy some of the What's going on normal guy some of the nuances that you that you 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 find out in the Star Wars universe you know like my man Wedge my man Wedge was cool with Luke he was there until the end yeah they they, uh, they apparently they grew up together you know what I'm saying so it, it, they like. There's there's a lot of people that tie in together and, and stuff like that, which is it was it's just it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um so some good news. The I don't know how much you want to trust this, but any good news with this show that's mirrored in controversy, it, I'll take it. They showed the two premiere episodes at the at either the con film festival or the, the shit they just did with where George Lucas was speaking. I th- and the reception so far for the first two episodes is that this is a fucking really good show. Which I'll take as good news. But as we know, <laughs> especially for Disney Star Wars, the first two episodes are always good. Yeah. And then it just goes down a fucking hill into oblivion. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. So let's hope that they can sustain this. I just want them to keep the, uh, with Kathleen Kennedy away from anything Star Wars. Well, they're already... So this whole thing is mirrored in controversy because the showrunner is already being touted as a feminist, woke warrior who hates George Lucas and hates all men and all this other shit. So... Half the fan, half the fan base who gives a shit, who still, you know, is go woke, go broke, doesn't want this to succeed. The other half is holding their breath, hoping that we get something good. I hope we get something good too. Yeah. Now, all right, going going back to the 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 uh, this show because it's the old republic. And we got uh, shit we ain't never seen before. Are these Jedi or are these Force users technically stronger or as strong as Vader? 
No. So, Are they stronger than the ones that we've seen so far? So, I believe if I if I'm not mistaken on how the story where the story lines up, they all should be. Right, because th- this is hundred years before uh, the prequel trilogy. Right, they all should be, but I believe at this time because there's been so much peace they have become complacent and i think that's where we're i think that's where we're coming into the story on why now the sith are are picking this moment to hunt down jedi and the acolyte is being tasked with this thing is because they're they're trying to catch the jedi asleep at the wheel with the jedi believing that they don't they don't serve a defense purpose against the dark side of the force. So yeah, they should be stronger. They should be better. But you're catching them off guard. So who knows? Well, who knows how they're actually going to react? Okay. And this is before Palpatine, right? Because I don't want to. Yeah. Before Palpatine. All right. I don't want uh, another TV show where, where it's like this should be Plagueis should be here somewhere. I believe. I believe Plagueis will probably come, should come up towards the end. Because I, I know Yoda's Yoda has been confirmed to be in the show, but I don't know exactly when or where. Like, we're going to get to see Yoda that doesn't need the fucking cane to walk around. Shit. This motherfucker's going to be in the prime of his life. I just don't need Palpatine at the end turning around. It was me, Austin. <laughs> oh. It wasn't General Bane. It was me. Nah. Well, you gotta understand his his master Plagueis was the one that actually commissioned the the Clone Wars on Kamino. Like if Palpatine's master Darth Plagueis was he's one of those people that he had the ability to what is it the Force C or something like that? I forget what it was called. Or somewhat like a with somewhat like a precognition. Yeah. Oh, speaking of prequels and shit, did you guys, you guys know that now the official, the official canon is that Palpatine is the one who manipulated the Metachlorians before Anakin was born to make Anakin Skywalker. Yep. He's the one that set that whole thing in motion with with Anakin's mother and and all that other good stuff. So like the uh, like the joke I used to say back when the sequel trilogy just first came out. The Force, maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Palpatine. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually very excited for this show and see what direction it goes into. We got what, like another week or a week and a half? It's next week. Next yeah. week. Next Wednesday. Is it is it gonna be on Wednesdays? I think it's gonna be on Tuesdays. Oh, they're doing they're doing the fucking thing where they show it as we're going live, so we can fucking talk about it. Yeah, it's um, June fourth. Wow, it's next uh, June fourth. Yeah, that's next Tuesday. Yeah. Set your calendars, kids, because word is this. So you said this is gonna be a girl power TV show. Well. That's what the fuck everybody's assuming because of because of who the showrunner is. And then if you if you watch all the promotional thing, the acolyte is a female and they've just been really focusing on Trinity. Who I think if you really want to swerve people, I think Trinity dies within the first fucking episode. Episode and a half. Yeah, but then Neo's going to come and fuck everything up. And we already want him for, for, was it Bane or Rain or? Raven. Raven. See? Raven. Raven. 
Yo, if if she dies by getting stabbed, <laughs> this, this show is gonna be this this show is gonna already win. But she gotta get stabbed by Darth Maul. I don't give a shit if she gets stabbed by Darth Rocky. <laughs> Somebody's got to fucking die after getting stabbed. Somebody else. Yeah, so, all right, so they're going to have different colored lightsabers now, right? I don't know because I honestly don't know how they're going to do the lightsaber shit. Because that's another thing that George Lucas was was really fucking adamant that there was only green, red, and blue. And then Sam Jackson, they added purple for Sam because Sam literally wanted just, he wanted to be able to point himself out in the crowd while they were doing big fight scenes. So I don't think George really, really wanted to put the focus on multi, on all these different colors. But again, they're not, they're not following what he said. So who knows? I mean, he made the force something that you're born with. Then he made it Kung Fu and then he made it Metachlorians. So he actually came, he actually explained that. And the force is, the force is all around us. It's in every living thing. It is exactly what Obi-Wan said it was. The amount of metachlorians you have in your system is what allows you to tap into all that force around you. Like, it's like, uh, like lifting weights. Just cause you, just cause you can walk into the gym and there's weights everywhere. Doesn't mean you have the musculature to lift these weights. But it also doesn't mean that you can't gain the musculature to lift the weights. And it also doesn't not mean that you can't not get gains <laughs> for the for the weights. Where to butcher a perfectly good sentiment. Yo, but I mean shit, it's one of those like you got metachlorine, you got the glow, and you got kung fu. Like I was waiting for Bruce Lee to be in the back. Kung Fu. Like they did in the, the, the dragon movie. <laughs> but it was when they found out David Carradine took his place. Got too That's young for a that. Up story. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So you're saying that these people these people should be just as powerful or different skilled. Theoretically, they these Theoretically, this should be the strongest set of Jedi's we've seen on film. But again, they, I believe they're getting caught in a in a time of peace. Okay. But also, this should be like non-Boba Fett <laughs> shit, right? Like, if we see a, an assassin that's supposed to be a badass, he's going to be a badass, right? He's not going to... That, that's what the whole entire show is about, the acolyte who's the assassin. All right. So if they Boba Fett this thing, Oof. if they Boba Fett this thing, Disney should just stop making Star Wars. Don't come up with Ahsoka Season 2. Don't come up with the movies. Cancel everything right now. But keep the lightsabers. Half the, half the fan base is already against you, and you will lose the other half of the fucking fan base. Yeah, because Boba Fett was disappointing. It it was. Yo, I don't know how you take the biggest gangster in the fucking universe and make him the world's greatest stepdad to <laughs> a fucking biker gang. Like th this motherfucker, this motherfucker should have been taking over. Should have been fucking collecting names and bodies left and right. That's what the fuck he does. Like, I don't. I don't get how you see. I don't get how you see him in the Mandalorian. Be so fucking badass, and then you won't let him do that in his own show. And then not only that, you cut away from his show. 
to give us a great mini season of a different fucking show. He should have killed Bubba the Hut. Bubba the Fat. No, Bubba the Hut. Jabba. Yeah, he should have killed both of them. Jabba was already dead by this time. No, he should have killed Jabba and, and his mama. Those two things that were coming at him, oh, he should have no, killed I both think, of them. I think those were his brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, so he should have killed both of them, let them know we ain't fucking around. You even, I, how the, they even fucked up Dark Cassanthan, man. The, that assassin, right? Yeah, the Wookiee. Oh no, I was I was thinking of the blue guy from the, the cartoon. Oh no, Cad Bane Cad Bane was still cool. You can't really fuck up Cad Bane. Well, apparently he's not dead. Because he beeped. Yeah. <laughs> I I I'm just gonna sound like a broken record if I talk about a <laughs> All the characters who are not dead in the Star Wars universe. He wasn't stabbed. But um would he be in this or these two? No. Well, what species is old enough to be in both? Oh Yoda. Yoda and Bubba the Fat the Fat Fat no. fat, fat Bubba. <laughs> Jabba the Hut. There you go. I don't believe he's gonna be in this unless he's like a fucking kid. I don't know how long his species lived. Maybe I don't know how old uh, Chewbacca is. I mean, it's only a hundred years before the prequels, and then uh, I don't know. May he might not be there either. So it might only be just Yoda. Because mm. <laughs> Yoda's <laughs> Yoda was like nine hundred and something years old for the original trilogy. So that means he's got to be maybe 700 in this one. So, so he's, a, he's a young chicken in this one. What about um, the dude from Ahsoka? The guy that died. We oh, thought he uh, was a... Ray Stevens? Yeah, we thought he was a, um, a guardian. Yeah, we, do, we still don't know much about his character. He's uh, He's too young. He's only a few years older than Anakin. Okay, but um, w would we see more guardians in this, or is there no Jedi Temple? No, the Jedi Temple exists. All right. Yeah, they. We can definitely see the Jedi Guard, but I don't. We can't see them, but for the purpose that they serve, I don't know. I don't know if we would. That's the Jedi Sentinels. I don't know if we would see them. But I do know that there's there are other there are other ways to be a Jedi Sentinel other than just putting on the mask and the garb and protecting the thing. They were spies. They they did other shit. So who knows? We'll okay. see. We'll see if we see a yellow color lightsaber floating around. Yeah, I could have swore I saw a yellow yellow lightsaber in one of these fucking breakdowns. Well, I, I, I well I saw I started watching. Uh, a video of what is, you know, watch this before you watch the show, get to know everything. I saw like a, a picture of people walking up the stairs with a yellow lightsaber and some other shit. And I said, you know what? Let me not watch this because I don't want to come in here with his preconceived notion of shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's going to be Fred. Fred's going to be the one. And then we go it's there and it's Steve. Yeah, it's fucking from, yeah, it's from Fisto and it's like shit. You know, nah, but hey, that's that's perfectly legitimate. If you if you don't already know, yeah, he he want an orange drink, and I'm like, if you know, you know, and I don't know what orange drink you talking about. So what? <laughs> J J Lo. That's a J Lo thing. Yeah, she said you get what? What she said you get a. A sandwich with an orange drink. You know, if you know, you know. And everybody's like, orange drink. <laughs> Talking about orange soda. A sun kiss. Yeah, it's like, Fanta, what? Sunny D. Like what? What's? Oh, what's that? Killer? What's that shit that uh, Cavs was telling us about with an H? 
Is that orange? I think so. Hot should know. The the Dominican juice. The juice you go to the store and it's like 50 cents for a gallon. He's, he's taking his uh, his contract negotiated nap. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's taking his silence to South Beach. Well, I guess on that note, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what. Uh, this one's for Ray. I'm gonna do what Ray normally does. Tune back in tomorrow. We got the sports show, which I believe they're talking about. Fuck it, I don't know what they're talking about, but probably the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, uh, and we, maybe another fucking uh, simulation. Yeah, we got we yeah, we got game three of Hawks versus Quills. There's two new teams that have been added, the 70s and 80s, and then the early 2000s team. Uh, tune back in on Thursday where they're going to go over what happened with the king and queen of the ring and double or nothing. Tune back in Friday and or Saturday and or both days for the tone of show, 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 show. We're right. We're talking about whatever the fuck they talk about on Friday, Saturday, <laughs> and or. <laughs> And then go fuck yourself. Yeah, do all those things. Word. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's your friendly neighborhood knucklehead signing out. Peace, everybody. Come back soon, Ray.